Welcome back to Mod Monday, everybody, and we've got a fun one here today. Let us all welcome and thank Des Blatt and the great Trollololarian for their work on Seafaring and Else, our newest showcase for the day. This mod is available now, within the most popular section of the workshop, mind you, and I do believe that it is in the process of being updated as we speak, which is spectacular. We all know how much Beardo just loves the seafaring and don't starve together, and while he believes next to nothing could really change his mind, he does feel as if this mod here had just enough to tide him over. But without further ado, let's showcase the new additions. And with what will likely become a familiar sight within this series, our journey today begins in the configuration screen, which of course can just be found in the modding screen overall. Seafaring and else offers plenty of it, as certain recipes, damages, efficiencies, and more can be tweaked to your liking, aka making things easy and more accessible, or difficult and taxing to complete. However, for our purposes today, we will be leaving everything at default as the modders intended. The mod itself offers up new seafaring crafts that improve combat efficiency, spice up our transportation means, and simply just makes overall navigation not only easier, but more fun too. So, let's break it all down one by one. And of course, if we want anything to do with seafaring, we must turn our attention to the think tank for them crafts. And I honestly love that the modders just simply integrated the add-ons into the pre-existing constructs as making an entirely new crafting tab or anything like that would be completely unnecessary and simply annoying considering how many we already have. So well done there, bonus points. But you know what else is really annoying? Having to rely on personal light sources while on the water. But the added boat lights, however, change that, as they serve as stationary light sources for our vessels that can be turned on and off at will, can be refueled over time if need be by most anything, take little space away from any further boat crafting, and offer the perfect amount of light and to not be too good, if you know what I mean. Seriously, I may just keep this mod installed simply for these things alone. Then again, the new boat floodlight may just be my newest favorite thing. It not only accomplishes what Winona spotlights could not, it simply is better than them in every single way. They too require refueling now and then, mind you, and the cone of light they provide are tailored to your steering wheel to boot. So in lamest terms, wherever you set your heading, the light will follow. And that's spectacular. Oh, and you can turn it on and off as well as to not waste fuel. So score one over Winona's dumb lights once again. But now is when the fun begins. Screw heaving and hoeing mass all day long. Let's just steampunk this puppy. The turbine engine can propel your boat without a stinking cloth sail of any sort and does so faster than them to boot. As most things in this mod, the engine will require fuel to operate, so refueling it will be a must eventually. But be careful now. Use the engine too much, and it will begin overheat on you, heating you up in the process as well. But push it even beyond that point, and you will have a catastrophic explosion on your hands. Not only will you lose your engine, you'll likely lose everything on board, as the flames will have their way. So, good luck, and be smart. Thankfully though, the engine too can be turned on and off to conserve fuel as well as cool it down. However, funnily enough, we can use ice and or ice cream to do it ourselves. Just whatever you do, do not overwork your turbine engines. Unless of course, you want to. And what do I mean by that? Well, we can choose to hammer our engine to send it in the overdrive mode. 
Hammer once to turn it on, and once to return to normal. Just be sure to use it sparingly, as who knows what you'll be running into at this increased speed, but also because you'll not only overheat the engine quicker in this mode, it will use up fuel faster. However, if you truly have the need for speed or are just insane, feed the engine gunpowder to sail the seas even faster. The developers call this mode Uber Super Duper Gunpowder Overdrive Mode, and I just think that's amply named for sure it's just good fun these turbine engines but they ain't the only fun new things to be had out on the water folks boat cannons and thus cannon balls are available for use and although i do believe the shipwrecked ones to be a bit more superior these are still worthy of our time here today and oh yeah just so you know each cannonball craft grants three cannonballs total so there you go when you have your cannonballs of choice at the ready, you can then load up to four stacks of them within a cannon to begin. You'll have to then use the cannon stick to direct traffic, pretty much. You click to use the gadget, and the cannon will just launch a ball with pinpoint accuracy. The rock cannonballs, aka just the default ones, deal 150 damage, but remember now, everything is configurable. They also destroy structures and even fell trees if you wish. Now the fire cannonballs are pretty self-explanatory. When they go boom, like the normal cannonballs, they also will choose to spew fire every which way to Sunday. At their base, they do 200 damage per explosion, plus all the dang fire damage that's gonna come with them. But cannonballs ain't the only projectiles able to be fired. Not only does another bomb mod called Felix's Bombs work with these cannons, knapsacks can be launched as well. So perhaps you can just alternate firing modes to both deal damage while then keeping the big bads at bay with a little snooze. Ah, but this mod holds some secrets, everyone. Two additional crafts are solely accessible via the Celestial Altar on the Lunar Island the Glass Shard Cannonball, and the Intrepid Moon Floodlights. Let's discuss them. The Moon Glass Cannonballs deal a whopping 400 damage explosion, which, yeah, is very likely way too much, even considering how one needs to go about crafting them. Still, they are very neat and, of course, configurable to boot. The Moon Floodlight, however, is a perfectly fine addition in need of no change, I believe. It has a further range than the normal Floodlight, its cone of vision is significantly wider, it also uses less fuel overall, and yes, it just bloody looks better at the end of the day. And man, I can't believe I'm saying it, because I like a lot that comes with it. The best part about this mod are the dang light sources. But there you have it, everyone. Seafaring and else. So please, give thanks to Desplat and the great Trollalarian once more for their wonderful work. And join me in taking part in some fancy new seafaring fun. Seriously, I love me them floodlights. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Feel free to give me some more mod suggestions down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.